Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna take you on a little tour through the 36 items of tech all around my home. 36, but last year, last year I had 37. Alrighty, so let's start off with the desk. So the first thing here, we have the M1 Mac Mini connected to the TS3 CalDigit Thunderbolt dock because I'm not one of those heathens that uses Windows up until next month. Next, we have the Kanto U2 speakers, which are nice, white, and shiny, and make my voice feel more bassy when I watch my own videos back. I have two keyboards on my desk. We have the IQ Unix L80, and we have the Apple Magic Keyboard. Now, it's really nice having two of them because I prefer to type on this one. But if I'm in a business Zoom call and I want to play World of Warcraft, it's better for me to have this one where they can't hear the sound of my typing as, as loudly. On the left-hand side, I've got the Magic Trackpad from Apple, which makes scrolling through Twitter a more pleasant experience. And item number five on the right is the Razer Pro Click Mouse. The only reason I got this over the Logitech MX Master was because I wanted everything to be white. And if you ain't white, you ain't right. Moving along, item number six is the Shure SM7B microphone connected to the Rode PSA1 arm, connected to the, uh, what's this called? The Cloud Lifter preamp thing, connected to the Focusrite 2i4 audio interface, and this makes my voice sound far more bassy when I'm on Zoom dates. And over on the other side of the desk, we have my AirPods Max. Now, I don't use these very often, but when I go around out and about in town or in coffee shops, I love wearing these to show that I'm an Apple fanboy. Moving downwards, we've got this little uh, box that hides all of my cables with amazing cable management. And over here, I have the professional iPad 12.9 inches, which is what I use for my drawing lessons these days. At the moment, we are studying the human form, which is very nice. And underneath the iPad, we have the professional MacBook. This is the 13-inch M1 model from 2020. And this is what I use when I need to do work in the toilet, which gives a whole different meaning to the phrase toxic productivity. Item 11 is what I often wear while, when I'm out and about town. This is the uh, Apple Watch Series 6 with the blue leather strap, which lets me signal my elegance and sophistication around other people. And also on the desk, we have my professional AirPods. Now, these go absolutely everywhere with me and help me listen to stuff and watch stuff at two to 3x speed, which is a far more productive way of doing things. Item 13 is this very camera. This is the Sony a7S III, uh, which is what helps this video appear in glorious 4K. And to get to item 14, we go behind the window and we find another camera connected to this pole. This is the Sony a7 III, which is my overhead camera to get those fantastic shots. And this is connected to a huge ass boom arm, which I can tie onto the ceiling. If I ever want to get overhead camera footage. Oh, this is quite heavy. 15 is currently hidden behind the kitchen. This is the Sennheiser MKH416 microphone, which is connected to an XLR cable, which is how I get audio for my videos mostly. And next we have the Aperture 120D Mark II, which is the light that I use for most of my videos. And it hides over here behind the curtain when it's not in use. Item 17 is the Godox SL60 light, which is connected to an Aperture Space Light softbox which is what provides the lighting for some of my videos and my Zoom calls and podcasts. And item 18 is the light bulbs that I have in all of the lamps and all of the ceiling lights around the living room. And these are the Philips Hue, which I can control using the Handy app. And I can set all sorts of weird setups when it comes to the lights. And these are particularly good when I want to set the mood when I have a friend over and we want to be productive together. Item number 19 is behind my little spider plant, we have an Amazon Echo, which I also have in the kitchen, which, was, which is what plays my music. And I also have a HomePod. In fact, I've got two of them, but I don't really use them because I don't really like Apple Music. So I'm not including it as part of the household tech tour. Moving into the kitchen now, item number 20 is this cordless Dyson Animal V8 Hoover, which I bought purely for the purposes of hoovering up spiders and pests from around the house. And item number 21 is the Nutribullet 600 series blender, which is how I make my Huel and also my protein shakes to try and look more like Zac Efron. Next to that, we have the Starg EKG fancy ass electric kettle, which is very, very nice indeed. The only problem with this kettle is that it pours really, really slowly. And so it forces me to be mindful when all I want is a cup of coffee. Next, we come to my favorite piece of tech in the house, which is the simple human bin. This is actually so good. It's such an absolute joy and pleasure to use. And everyone comments on it whenever they visit the house and they use the bin. They're always like, whoa, this is an awesome bin. Moving along the hallway, we come to the utility cupboard at the front of the house. 
which is where I have a big ass color laser printer for those two occasions a year when I need to print off a label to return something. And now moving into the bedroom, we've got some more funky tech here. So let's start off with my trusty analog alarm clock. This forces me to wake up in the morning to turn off the alarm on it so that I don't stay in bed for too long. And I've got this thing which is sort of like a laptop desk that I use in bed if I want to play World of Warcraft with my MX Master 3 mouse while I'm in bed, which is very nice and handy. And it also functions as a pretty good standing desk if for some reason I don't want to work in the living room. Continuing the bedroom tech, we have the Dyson Cool Fan, which I often joke is my biggest fan that I have in my bedroom at all times. And next to that, we have my trusty Amazon Kindle, which is what always stays with me on my bedside every time I need to read. And I've got these uh, blue light blocking glasses that I almost never use. Apparently they're good for you, but whatevs. The final item in the bedroom setup is the Aura Smart Ring. Now this apparently tracks your sleep and lets you see stuff related to your sleep. So I wear it most nights just to track things, but I haven't really found it very useful beyond that. And it comes with this little charging station where you can put it to charge. And back into the living room, we now end with the music and entertainment setup. So this is the Yamaha P125 keyboard, which is what I use when I wanna uh, play piano and sing along. And next to it, I've got two guitars. This is a, I don't know what this is, but this is a guitar that I've had since like 2015. And over here is the Martin Mini Electro Acoustic Guitar, which I guess counts as tech because it's electro acoustic, which means I can plug it into an amplifier if I want. And next to that, I also have an electro acoustic ukulele for at some point when the world opens up again and I can do busking in town, I wanna busk with my ukulele because I'm really cool. Before we get into the entertainment setup, I wanna show you around my uh, really fantastic ethernet setup. So we've got an ethernet cable slot over there and there is a long ass ethernet cable which snakes all of the way around the living room all the way around the sofa, behind this, behind these plants, behind these eight keyboards from IQ Unix that I'm gonna be testing out very shortly in terms of finding the best mechanical set of Quake keys. Cable goes around, goes around, goes around, goes behind the TV and goes into the entertainment setup overall. And behind here we have one of these ethernet switches, which is what allows wired internet to go into all of the tech that is powering this uh, media setup over here. So let's start off with the old uh, trusty Sony PlayStation 5, which is what I use these days to play Horizon and a little bit of Call of Duty with the boys. Underneath that, we have loads of board games, which don't count as tech, but something that definitely does count as tech is the Oculus Quest 2 virtual reality headset along with the controllers. This has actually been quite a lot of fun recently. And if you guys like, I'm gonna be planning a review about what it's like to game on a virtual reality experience. Moving upwards, this TV is the LG 50 inch OLED. I think it's the C9 TV, which I will put a link to in the video description if you wanna check it out. And finally, we have the Apple TV 4K, which powers this whole setup. That is how we watch Netflix. It's how we watch Disney Plus, And it's also how we watch Nebula using the Nebula app for the Apple TV. TV. Now, if you haven't heard by now, Nebula is a really cool independent streaming type app where creators like me and my friends like Thomas Frank, Legal Eagle, Lindsay Ellis, we've all kind of built Nebula together as an alternative place to put content away from YouTube. It's not supposed to be a competitor to YouTube, but it's like an extra place where we can put stuff that might not work on YouTube without having to worry about the algorithm. So on Nebula, one of my favorite series is my workflow series, <laughs> if I say so myself, where I talk through my workflow using all my productivity apps like Notion and Roam and Day One and how I take notes from podcasts and how I keep up to date with blogs. On Nebula as well, you'll also find all of the deep dive interviews that I've done with really cool people over the last year, people like Ryan Holiday, people like Derek Sivers, Sarah Dietschy, Jade, Jade, Ruby Granger, these people that you might have heard of. And on Nebula, you also get ad-free early access to all of my videos along with all of the other creators that are part of Nebula. Now, the best way to access Nebula is actually to sign up to an account with CuriosityStream who are very kindly sponsoring this video. CuriosityStream is the world's leading documentary streaming subscription platform that's founded by John Hendricks, the founder of the Discovery Channel. And on CuriosityStream, there are thousands of high budget, really high quality documentaries. One series I've been enjoying recently is called Redesign My Brain, where the guy in the documentary is trying to do all these things to hack his brain into being smarter and more creative, uh, which were lessons I'm trying to take for myself as well. And the really cool thing about CuriosityStream is that they support independent creators. And so we've actually got a really good bundle deal with CuriosityStream and Nebula. And the idea there is if you sign up for an annual subscription to CuriosityStream, which is less than $15 a year, you also get free access to Nebula bundled with that for as long as you're a member.
remember. And that means for less than $15 a year, you get access to the thousands of high quality documentaries on CuriosityStream and also hundreds, if not thousands at this point, videos from me and a load of other independent YouTubers on Nebula. And this makes this the single best dream in the streaming world. So if that sounds up your street, if you want to get access to loads of more exclusive videos from me, my creator friends, and loads of documentaries of CuriosityStream, then head over to curiositystream.com forward slash Ali. And if you sign up with that link, then they'll email you your Nebula details to you. And so you can check out all my extra content uh, to your heart's desire. So thank you CuriosityStream for sponsoring this video. And thank you for watching. If you like this tour of my household tech, you might like to check out this video over here, which is my productivity desk setup that goes into all of the stuff on this desk in much more detail. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.